This is the week five assignment for Introduction to Music Production. My name is Jeff. I'm going to be doing a lesson on configuring an EQ plugin in Logic Pro 10, and the objectives will be to compare an analog mixer console's EQ settings to those of a preset in a DAW and demonstrate a basic EQ setup for vocals. So EQs or equalizers are very important because it allows the music producer to alter, I guess what you would call um, the focus of the mix and highlight sounds that you want and reduce or eliminate ones that you really uh, don't want up here. And it's so important that you always find these settings on analog consoles. Here's a magnification of a smaller one and we're dealing with this button and these three knobs. Obviously larger analog boards would have more knobs to be able to uh, manipulate more uh, frequency ranges. If I go over to my DAW, we're talking about this EQ button right here on the channel strip. So let's move that over here and let's configure the settings as they appear on the board. The first one it says here is a low cut. And what that really is is a high pass filter which allows uh, only higher frequencies to pass through and it's used to eliminate really low sounds, hums, rumbles, and sounds that really uh, that are underneath the fundamental of, of what you're recording and that you don't want. And that button is right here. Let's turn the rest of them off. And we'll set the frequency as it is here to 75 hertz. And just like it says on the analog board, 18 decibels per octave. And the first of these three knobs is the high frequency EQ knob just right here and that's a high shelving filter so that you can amplify or attenuate in this case frequencies at the uh, 12 kilohertz range that's this button right here move it up to 12,000 and you can play with it just as you would the knob the next one that we have here is our mid-range EQ, which for this console it's set to 2.5 kilohertz. I go over here. You'll notice that the picture is different. That's because it's a parametric setting, which is kind of like a bell curve. And so you can see how that is when I uh, raise and lower everything. And you can change the shape of that, which you can't do on an analog board. But for now, let's just leave that at zero and you have your low frequencies. In this case, what it really is is a low shelving filter, which, just like the high one, it's this shape, and it's set at 80 hertz. And there you go. Now you have a mirror of what the analog board and what the digital audio workstation uh, can do. So to wrap things up, I thought it would be fun to show a practical application. Uh, I have here a recording of a couple of high school students, and I wanted to create a vocal EQ and a preset for this particular student so that I could use it over and over during this recording session. So I saved it after I made all the modifications and you can see it here. And everything else is similar to the previous example. I just kind of changed some of the parameters of the, of the frequency on the high shelving filter here. Uh, I added some parametric filters and the craziest thing is probably this big old high pass filter that I that I put in, what happened is uh, there was no pop filter. And so there's a lot of low frequencies and, and rumblings and stuff that I wanted to, to take out. So I'm going to play it three times. And the first time, you'll hear it just as it was recorded, um, which is a little bit kind of uh, dead sounding. Uh, the second time, hopefully you'll hear that it's a, a bunch brighter. And the third time that it mixes in well with the guitar and uh, highlights the voice. So thanks for watching and listening to my uh, tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. Para contarte canto, quiero que sepas cuanto me haces bien, y me haces bien, y me haces bien. Para contarte canto, Quiero que sepas cuánto me haces bien y me haces bien y me haces bien para contarte canto. Quiero que sepas.